He won't mind if I mention it. On these long walks, he takes every day to clear his mind. I'll be honest with you. I have really sad moments. I have incredibly angry moments. Mike Regan uses this time. Uh, I'll let go. To do what he needs to do without anyone watching. That's when I crack. The flood of emotions take over instantly as he walks and reflects about his life and his work and that day. Where was he? Like this. He was right here. Everybody was working on him, trying to stop the bleeding. Where's that you made him back? Take that. March 28, 1968. We didn't expect to get hit, and we did. Cam Lo, Vietnam. They were in a huge firefight. It was incoming rockets and mortar. Screaming in. We thought we were secure, and all of a sudden, beyond belief. It really affected him. Yeah, what I decided to do was try and help the wounded. It's not fair. Mike was holding his head, and <laughs> um, he was bleeding out. Yeah, he just came out to say goodbye. Keep your head down. Goodbye to Vietnam, to the war. That fellow Marine was going home in a few days. <laughs> he was counting on it even as he looked into the eyes of the Marine Corporal who held him tight in the midst of that firefight. Artist Mike Regan. He says, Mike, I just want to go home. And then he closed his eyes and died. And I've never forgotten that. The face Mike Regan will never forget. That face has been a part of every day of my life. His name. And I didn't know his name. Didn't know his name. But he knew it was the mailman, didn't know his name. When he showed up, we all knew he had a mailbag, and we all prayed that there'd be something in that bag for us. That Marine, the company driver who delivered mail, took his last breath in Mike Regan's arms 46 years ago. His face was the one I see every day. And he's been with him every day since. All of my drawings are done because of those last words. I just want to go home. They didn't get to. He's Mike Regan's inspiration for each of the portraits. Look at her. She's looking at her dad. For the Fallen Heroes project he started 10 years ago. He's an angel who walks among us. Mike has to draw. The project has come alive because of that. This young man is being carried away from his dad's funeral. The portraits are his gifts to the families. I'm trying to draw some life out of death. Who've lost loved ones in war. Ben Colgan's dad, okay. Joe. Ben was pretty early on. Portrait number 22 in 2004. How many guys do you know, that, you know, that give their time, their talent, and their treasure away free? Ten years later, this one. So I brought you that. For Bobby Jones's mom, Brenda. <sighs> and it's for Bobby's cousin, Matthew, too. It just makes my heart feel like it's going to explode with love. Because <laughs> I miss him so much. It's OK, baby. We're trying to heal hearts because so many are broken. He's not hurting no more. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, it is. Thank you. And that's why I draw every day. And the minute I sit in my chair, the entire world becomes this small circle around me. The eyes of this young man are looking in my eyes. I think every time he does a portrait, he's trying to open the eyes. Well, yeah, are these looking at you? You know, I mean, they look right back at me. With each portrait, I just hear, get me done, get me home. Mike got to come home. Yes. He did. He came home, but there's a lot of broken hearts out there from coming home, too. The long walks help. I went for my long walk this morning, cried half my walk. I'm a combat veteran. I was in a bad place in Vietnam during a bad time. One thing about these letters is, as you've seen, a lot of them look like they were written yesterday. Letters from Vietnam. But he was a kid that was forced to be a man. Letters written by a 19-year-old, Vinnie Santanello, to his sister Lily. Ralph's mom. I had no idea about those letters. My mom died in July of 2002. Lily's son Ralph grew up in the same house in Jamaica, Queens as his uncle Vinny, the uncle he never met. He now has those letters. This one describes a dream his uncle had. All you said was, you're home. Boy, I wish that dream came true. But someday, I will come home. He never did. 
He died March 28th of 1968. Killed in that same firefight. I was there. That Doc Nunn and Mike Regan zero, one, zero, zero. survived. I'm seeing March 28th, 1968, right now. And I know that that's the date that he was killed. March 28th, 1968. I have to imagine that it was found on him um, after he died. Uncle Vinny wrote his final letter. Well, I got to be going now. Love your son, brother, Vinny. Notice the ink stains, blood stains. And seeing the blood splatter on it, it's just, it's chilling. And heartache, 46 years later. I feel like I don't deserve to hold this letter because I, I can never do what, what men like Vinny did and what they had to go through. The heartache and all the questions. That was always the question that I had as a child. You know, was my uncle in peace? Was he in pain? Now he knows. He was at peace and there was someone holding him and taking care of him. That someone is working on his next portrait, Vinnie Santanello. I mean, to me, that's amazing that we know. How do we know? I'm grateful to still be alive. Doc Nunn and Mike Regan reconnected after all these years. The only reason Doc's back in my life is because of this project. Mike and I were talking on the phone. I said, um, I need to know who the company driver was. I knew exactly who he was talking about. Doc says, Vincent Santanello, Saint. His nickname. I said, how'd you know that? He's been wearing his KI bracelet for 25 years. He wears it with pride and... An ache in my heart. These are heroes for me who have died for me and you. He died for me. I think I've shared 46 years of my life with Vincent. He made the ultimate sacrifice. When I handed it to him, I'm just going to say, your uncle looked at me and said he wanted to go home. And uh, in my heart, this portrait is the beginning of that trip. I'm going to be able to do what Vincent asked me to do, get him home. From his home in Long Island, New York, Ralph Morales well, come on. Look at you. traveled oh, to great. Edmonds, Washington to meet Mike Regan, oh, nice to, see you, man. to meet Doc Nunn. Doc, Ralph, oh. Ralph Morales. to attend the 10-year celebration so I, I had to come. of the Fallen Heroes Project. And he said, you know, I, I do this work because of your uncle. He He's here to celebrate Mike Regan. So good to see you. Nice to see you, too. And the 3,800 portraits he's created since he sketched Joe Colgan's son, Ben. He's a gold star dad. Portrait number 22, 10 years ago. For him and for me, I think it's a sense of closure. I held him in my arms as we were trying to save his life. Tonight. Mike Regan unveils his latest creation. Vincent's last words to me were, Mike, I just want to go home. I think in my heart that I'm beginning the trip that your uncle wanted to make 46 years ago. This is for you. Vinny is interwoven in everything that this man has done. Vinny's death has brought peace Love, closure, understanding, dignity, and honor to so many people. I stand here 46 years after his death, damn proud to say that I'm his nephew. Vinny Santanello is home now. John Sharifi, King 5 News.